Welcome to this week's Tavern Brawl video, and this one is all about the Murlocs. You get a deck with random Murlocs and some random spells of the class you choose. The Murlocs can be from any class. Um, there is a variety of ideas of how to approach this. I'm going to play this as Demon Hunter. That is one of the things that has been suggested by people because the hero power deals relatively well with a lot of the smaller Murlocs. And at the end of the day, what you are trying to do once you're in a match is you're trying to control the board. Uh, you try to stay in ahead on the board while also trying to push some damage, of course. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep that tiny fin. That's going to be very interesting. Um, so... Soul split is rough. Uh, we should be. It should be possible to get amalgam, so that we could potentially have demons, but it's a pretty useless card. Um, Blue Warrior is not great. I'm gonna not use it. Um, hope to get a one drop or a better two drop, even uh, as we see right there. So you could ar make arguments for other classes as well. Mage has a very strong hero power as well, and. Um, you could, and for Mage, you're probably going to get more consistently strong spells. Uh, so yeah, both players get the United Murlocs quest. That is, you summon 10 Murlocs, you get Megafin, which refills your hand with random Murlocs. So unless you have the quest already finished, you don't really have to worry too much about overcommitting to the board or running out of resources because you'll just get those back. Scargill, very strong. Uh, potentially, if you get some other higher cost Murlocs with them. Uh, the only things that you have to consider really holding back is maybe some removal and some of the stronger Murlocs like... Ooh, that's an interesting spell. Um, Alright, I don't have the mana for that. Um, so... Right, uh, what was it? Alright, yeah, uh, some of the stronger Murlocs like, uh, specifically like war leaders, uh, some of them like passive buffs that maybe you don't want to remove, you might want to keep a tight Collar back if you know your opponent can kill it. So now is the turn, of course, when I hero power. A second Inner Demon, that's rough. So that's, of course, the counter-argument to... Um, the counter-argument to playing Demon Hunter is that most of the spells don't synergize too well with it, though some of the ones in some of the Eladari are pretty good. Uh, Blade Dance can be pretty good if you get another attack buff. The smaller attack buffs are also pretty good. Inner Demon could be a finisher. Then again, I'm not perfectly certain if we want to go till turn 8, though, at the rate this is going, we just might. Um, I'll take out the totem. Uh, generally speaking, the totems from Shaman are particularly dangerous, as are any other non-Murloc minions that happen to somehow arrive. Of course, the idea for playing White Blade Shaman, presumably, is because he wants to get Bloodlust. Uh, Counterpunk will be D uh, Druid has uh, Savage Roar and... Uh, I guess, yeah, for, for white boards, there is a good amount of stuff that would make sense with Murlocs. Uh, you got the Soul of the Murloc as well. I don't think Murloc Synergy is consistent enough of a strategy um, to build your class around that. Mana Burn is interesting. I don't hate Mana Burn. I'll, I'll take the Scargill, I'll Mana Burn. I will take the trade to to try to preserve the Scargill and um, my board position as a whole because if he has a buff which he could very well have um, then I would rather have the Scargill live uh, that being said I think if you want to go for some for class whose spells are kind of inherently synergistic with Murloc you might want to go with Paladin because there's a lot of just single target buffs uh, as well as some Murloc related cards, though I think the only spell that is specifically Murloc related is anything can happen. Now Metamorphosis is a really good spell, and Feast of Souls definitely also helps with the Murloc playstyle. Um, I'm trying to think here how I best approach this. I think I will play the War Leader and then trade the Mermi in, and then I think. I think I will actually cast a Metamorphosis because I have the mana to do it and being able to effectively Pyroblast over two turns with even less mana than that uh, of Pyroblast itself it seems very strong. You can see I have right now I have 12 damage on board, 5 with a hero part is 17. That means that hero part of the turn after would already be lethal, so he has to deal with some of my board here. And this really what this is about. This is 
basically about momentum, right? Once you're behind, it's gonna be very hard to catch up, but since Murlocs inherently have a relatively fast playstyle, you could probably still um, just, you know, if you're behind, you might make the decision to just quit it and re requeue the next match. Um, that is a valid strategy depending on what you're trying to go for. If you're trying to, of course, go for a decent win rate for some reason, then uh, that would not be it. If you're trying to just get your weekly win, then um, that's perfectly valid strategy, as well as it reduces your MMR, so there is a chance that it would... Um, that... Ooh, that's another taunt. Wait, did he... Why didn't... Mm, I don't know. Okay, so there is a very valid argument to be made here to kill the knight. I'm trying. I'm trying to go for lethal uh, as soon as possible here. So having the five damage on the hand basically means he has to kill so much of my board that I can not deal more than uh, four points of damage. Counterpoint with the inner demon on hand, he would only a single mermaid surviving would be sufficient and something to break the taunt. Um, okay, that's. Blue Devil Stinger, that's valid, yeah. Not the best use of it, for sure. And yeah, so I was complaining about the Inner Demon at first in the game, and it turns out that was not necessary, because I win. Now, granted... <laughs> okay, listen, right, at some point it's too much. So, 1, 2, 7 would win, but let's just show off and use this. And... Really, that's the base of the brawl. It's kind of random. It is somewhat heavy on momentum because once you're ahead, it's going to be really hard to um, to fall behind again because your opponent would have to deal with your board. And once you're being more reactive than active, it's going to be harder to catch up because you're also losing HP. And then one of these out of nowhere wins can come. Uh, let's quickly open the pack. That is, of course, an integral part of what this is. And let's see if I get anything good this time around. I think the message is clear. The pack wants me to shut up. So, you know, leave a comment about, um, you know, if there's any other tips you have for this brawl. Uh, you know, tell us what you like about the brawl or not. And uh, so put a like on the video if you thought this was helpful or entertaining or really anything else that you liked about this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, as well as some more straightforward guide videos and, you know, some random entertainment videos, as well as a weekly podcast. You can join our Discord server to communicate with us, that is me and Alex, who's involved in this video, but he will be back tomorrow for the podcast, uh, directly, as well as other members of our community, in a format that I would argue is more convenient than the YouTube comment section. Otherwise, until next time, that's it.